What's up guys? Um, if you watched the video on the, uh, it was one of the target stand videos. It was either the original or the update. Um, you'll notice a section of it when I was testing out the target, I was shooting a, uh, an AR pistol that I built. And um, so one of the things I learned when I was building that, um, that pistol, it's now a rifle. Um, it's NFA Form 1, has a stock on it, 10 and a half inch barrel. So that's cool. Um, we'll get to that later. But one of the things I learned when I was building that um, was the gas pressure is a lot different than a, uh, a 16 inch mid length or a 16 inch carbine. There's a lot more pressure, sends the bolt back a lot harder because it's a shorter distance for the gas to go. So it's a quicker time. You know, the bolt cycle is a lot quicker and a lot harsher. And a lot of times when you buy like a standard standard lower parts kit, um, it comes with like a, what they call a carbine buffer. And what that is, for those of you that don't know, a carbine buffer is this right here. This is your buffer. And when they say carbine, they just mean it weighs uh, three ounces. And it's got little steel weights. You can probably, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's three little steel weights with rubber pads in between them. And it's three ounces uh, total, this whole buffer. So what it does when your bolt your bolt sits up against this bolt carrier group and the gas pushes it back with the recoil spring into the buffer tube or the receiver extension. So this is what slows down your bolt or speeds up your bolt. So on a short barrel, you know, a 10 and a half inch carbine length gas, there's a lot of pressure coming back and you know, it was a little harsh and I wanted to slow down the action a little bit. So I found out that a heavier buffer would fix that. And you can see in this, in my SBR right here, get it, take it apart. It has a, um, a Call Valley 4.3, uh, 4.3 ounce buffer. That's a um, an H2 or if it's like a spikes a, a T2 it's that that weight so it, it would be the equivalent to uh, two tungsten um, weights and one steel weight the reason they put steel uh, buffers or a three ounce three ounce carbine buffer in the um, in the lower parts because it's cheap you know steel steel weights are cheap and they can throw you know just a standard buffer like this in the kit you know and save 20 30 bucks and you know bring the cost down a lot of people don't really they don't know what they don't know i mean um you know if they don't know anything about buffer weights or anything like that they're not going to know the difference they're probably not going to be able to tell the difference either but especially for like shorter gas systems the uh, the heavier heavier buffer really really helps and i um i also noticed on my 16 inch rifle right here this has a mid-length gas system the gas tube is about right here carbine would be somewhere in this area so it's a little bit longer it's a slower you know it's a fraction of a second but it's a slower action it's a little smoother uh, anyway i was watching a video from uh from abner uh, miranda he filmed one of the classes that i was at um and i was noticing when i was shooting my shells were going this way kind of in a, a 130 to two o'clock or one o'clock to 130 range and i got to thinking about it i was like why is everybody else's shells going this way and mine are going really far that way i remembered uh you know one of the videos that um he was talking about it's one of his sbr videos or pistol pistol ar he was talking about a daniel defense barrel he had a mark 18 and his uh it's a 10.3 inch barrel and his daniel defense barrel he said a lot of those are over gassed so the gas porthole right here by the gas block or under the gas block is drilled out big so that way it'll run any kind of ammunition if it's got you know a uh, weak 223 like um like some wolf or steel case stuff like that cheap stuff it'll still cycle that it'll push enough gas back to cycle even the cheap stuff you know if you're running xm 183 you know some hot stuff it'll shoot them shoot them that way run a little cheaper stuff it'll shoot them a little farther back but anyway i was i, was, I got to wondering you know if my this is a daniel defense barrel um it's a lightweight barrel I was wondering if mine are shooting that way, I wonder if I could slow that down somehow and make them shoot, you know, a little more to the center and be a little more pleasant to shoot. Because even with this, this Griffin flash comp right here, it's still a little harsh to be a mid-length with a, you know, a flash comp. And so it just had a, it had a carbine, carbine weight buffer in it. So now 
I have in this gun, the same as the other gun, it's a um, the red KVP 4.3 ounce. It's like a uh, H2 um, weight buffer. And I noticed you know, it just felt a lot better to shoot. So that's the way um, you can tell. And if you get too heavy of a buffer, you can also uh, tell that because the it won't cycle far enough back. It won't catch a new round. There's too much weight and it'll it, uh, the, the bolt carrier is too slow coming back. It won't go back far enough. So usually, um, you can get away with like an H1 is a standard upgrade over a carbine buffer. It's pretty uh, pretty safe in any safe to use in any gas length, any rifle, anything like that. If you uh, if you feel like your barrel's way over gas, kind of like these Daniel Defenses, they have a lot of gas pressure. You, uh, you might want to look at an H2 buffer. It might uh, might help things out. Your steel case, your weak ammo, 223 stuff should be shooting four o'clock, five o'clock. Some of your hotter stuff, XM193, shoot about three o'clock, something like that. Um, if you're going to be shooting some hot stuff out of your uh, short barrel rifle or you know short barrel pistol AR, um, you're probably going to want to run at least an H1, if not H2. And if you're really feeling froggy, or if, maybe if you got like a, a barrel with a huge gas port that's kind of overgassed, maybe Daniel Defense or something, you might even want to try H3 buffer out. But uh, the rule of thumb is start low and work your way up to the heavier ones and then just uh, find one that ejects in a pattern that you like and uh, go from there. Got this first mag, this GI mag that was giving me problems. Uh, let's see if we can burn these rounds out of it real quick. Man. See if we can see the difference between a, uh, a short barrel with no compensation and a 16 inch mid length with a pretty good, comp pretty effective compensator. Here we go. All right. A lot of those are hits actually, but I think uh, maybe half of those hit from 50 yards. Not bad. No, uh, no Jerry Mitchellick or anything, but I kind of like it. You guys know the drill. If you like the video and you want to see more in the future, click right here. If you want to see another video right now, click right here. Thanks for watching. So at 10 yards, let's try it with a 556 pistol. This is a uh, DCM.